राम राम जैन धाय घोर हरि भो हरि भो हरि भो घर हरि भो धाय घोर हरि भो हरि भो हरि भो हरि भो ध्याय ध्याय प्रभु भाभु भा प्रभु भा प्रभु भा ध्याय ध्याय प्रभु भाभु भा प्रभु भा जय प्रभु भाव प्रभु पार की हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र की जाए ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो इज रिक्वेस्टेड टू स्पीक ऑन द मोड ऑफ गुडनेस सो आई विल स्पीक फ्रॉम द चैप्टर एंटाइटल्ड थ्री मोड्स ऑफ गुडनेस चैप्टर 14 फ्रॉम भगवद गीता so that entire chapter is um uh, focused on speaking about the three modes they're interacting with each other and the different characteristics of the modes so this one verse is from chapter 14 verse number 17 i'll read the sanskrit you can follow along if you can carefully listen satva sanjayate gyanam rajaso loba eva cha ramada moha tamaso bhavato gyanam eva cha translation from the mode of goodness real knowledge develops from the mode of passion greed develops and from the mode of ignorance develops foolishness madness and illusion chitra prabhupada's purport since the present civilization is not very congenial to the living entities krishna consciousness is recommended hmm. nice statement since the present civilization is not very congenial to the living entities krishna consciousness is recommended just recently i heard one doctor he's talking about the uh, coronavirus and he's giving so many uh reasons how through the ages man is playing with the earth's atmosphere and causing so many disharmony in the the functions of the earth um updating it with the coronavirus as present civilization he ends his lecture after describing how the earth is being challenged by radioactive materials and various types of uh, um what we say destructions of the electromagnetic field of the earth due to technology he says uh, it's practically impossible to be a human being better to become spiritual <laughs> that's his last words <laughs> he says better don't try to live a human life here go for the spiritual life <laughs> so here it says here probably said to the since the present civilization is not 
very congenial to the living entities, Krishna consciousness is recommended. Same thing. Through Krishna consciousness, society will develop the mode of goodness. When the mode of goodness is developed, people will see th things as they are. In the mode of ignorance, people are just like animals and cannot see things clearly. In the mode of ignorance, for example, they do not see that by killing one animal, they are taking a chance of being killed by the same animal in the next life. Because people have no education and actual knowledge, they become irresponsible. To stop this irresponsibility, education for developing the mode of goodness of the people in general must be there. When they're actually educated in the mode of goodness, they become sober and full knowledge of things as they are. Then people will be happy and prosperous. Even if the majority of people aren't happy and prosperous, if a certain percentage of the population develops Krishna consciousness and becomes situated in the mode of goodness, then there is the possibility of peace and prosperity all over the world. Otherwise, if the world is devoted to the modes of passion and ignorance, there is no peace or prosperity. In the mode of passion, people become greedy and their hankerings for sense enjoyment has no limit. One can see that even if one has enough money and adequate arrangements for sense gratification, there is neither happiness nor peace of mind. That is not possible because one is situated in the mode of passion. If one wants happiness at all, his money will not help him. He will have to elevate himself to the mode of goodness by practicing Krishna consciousness. When one is engaged in the mode of passion, not only is, is he mentally unhappy, but his profession and occupation are also very troublesome. He has to devise so many plans and schemes to acquire enough money to maintain his status quo. This is all miserable. In the mode of ignorance, people become mad. <clears throat> Being distressed by their circumstances, they take shelter of intoxication and they thus sink further into ignorance. Their future in life is very dark. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Mom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Dibedanta Swami Tinamene Namaste Saraswati Deve Govaravani Pacharini Nivrishi Shashunya Vari Pasyatya De Sitarine Shri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nitananda Sya Dvaita Gadathar Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So in another verse in this section, Krishna described that the material world is simply consisting of these three modes of nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. And he further elaborates by saying there's nothing beyond these modes. <clears throat> in other words, according to one's desires and activities, they connect with a particular type of mode, and that mode controls that person according to those desires and activities. So as soon as we adopt a certain quality of activity and characteristics that are uh, similar of that activity, such as the mode of passion is a hard struggle to gain material things and to enjoy sense gratification, then one becomes controlled by the activities of that and that mode. The word mode also is synonymous with the word rope. <clears throat> um, the word guna, is uh, an, another word for mode, but guna also means rope. So guna is mode and rope. So what, is the, what does the mode do? It, what does a rope do? Both the same. They bind people. They bind people to a certain type of consciousness and a certain type of activity, which gives them a certain type of result. And according to the level of the modes, one is situated in foolishness, hard struggle for existence or in happiness. So therefore these are the three modes and there's nothing beyond them as far as the material energy is concerned. They control everything and everyone is controlled by these modes of material energy. And the modes are also like energies, they shift. So sometimes 
one mode is more prominent at a certain time during the day <clears throat> and another mode is not. Just like when it's when it's rainy out, it's an indication of the mode of passion. Mm -hmm. When it's more sun shining, beautiful, and there's nice atmosphere, it's more the mode of goodness. When you have things like the coronavirus, it's the mode of ignorance. <laughs> so we see that certain modes are prominent at a certain time. And sometimes one mode will overcome another mode, and another mode will overcome another mode. So in another verse, Krishna explains, there's always competition for supremacy in this world between the different modes. So just like a boat on an ocean is somehow uh, turbulent by the ocean itself, sometimes the ocean is calm, sometimes the ocean is turbulent, sometimes the ocean is foggy. The ocean is controlling how the boat fares its way across. So in the same way, the living entity is sometimes in a peaceful situation, sometimes in a, a very, what we say, hard struggle, and sometimes acting completely foolish. Well, the modes are connecting to different people, and, and there's a different, there's a particular prominent mode that characterizes a per, per particular person's activities and mentality. So nowadays, sometimes we say that the mode of goodness is conspicuous by its absence. When something, just like when you walk into a room and, and there are a number of people who are meant to attend a particular meeting in that room, when one person is not there, he's conspicuous by his absence. So where is that person? He's not here. Just his absence indicates the person. So the mode of goodness is conspicuous by its absence in this present Kali Yuga age. The, but the mode of goodness is the principle of elevation in consciousness. So the mode of goodness has certain characteristics and qualities. And they are described in Bhagavad Gita as the qualities of a Brahmana. Peacefulness, uh, equanimity, charity, um, uh, tolerance, uh, religiousness, knowledge, simplicity, um, wisdom, worship of the Lord. And these are all the qualities of the mode of goodness. Mode of passion it means uh, want to uh, have fame, power, money, position, and the mode of passion has one good quality, creativity. That is the only good quality in the mode of goodness. If sometimes people, are, I mean passion, in the mode of passion, people are very creative. Just like it says that the Brahm, Lord Brahma creates this material world and he is somewhat influenced by the mode of passion under the guidance of Krishna. So, and of course, destruction when, when there's a mood of destruction, such as war, when there's a mood of uh, intoxication, when there's mood of laziness, when there's a mood of excess amounts of sleep, these are all qualities of the mode of ignorance. So for devotees who are practicing Krishna consciousness, they have to rise above the two lower modes and situate themselves in the qualities of the mode of goodness. And only then can those these activities be offered to Krishna. In other words, through the mode of goodness, one is allowed to pre perform devotional service effectively. So what is one of the one of the qualities of the mode of passion that devotees have a tendency to fall in, and that is attachment to results. So those who are overly attached to the results of their activities, although they perform devotional service, are being affected by the mode of passion. Those who are lazy in devotional service are being affected by the mode of ignorance, like that. Yeah, I like that. So, But in the mode of goodness, there's all, only good qualities, knowledge, happiness, and peacefulness, and worship of the supreme but still the mode of goodness is still within the the confines of the material energy 
So Krishna told Arjuna, uh, be situated in the mode of goodness and then reach transcendence. So mode of goodness is like a stepping stone to transcendence. Sometimes when you're going up stairs, you have to go one stair at a time generally. Uh, so you go from one stair to another to another to you and you're gradually going up. It's practically impossible or even very, very difficult to go from passion to Krishna consciousness or what we say Sutta Sattva. The word Sattva indicates goodness and then Sutta means pure goodness or Krishna consciousness. So that pure consciousness is actually transcendental or Krishna consciousness. So a devotee is not aspiring for the mode of goodness, but they're situating themselves in the qualities of the mode of goodness, both in character and in activity. In other words, humility, tolerance, these are the different qualities that one should practice in order to reach the mode of goodness and then eventually transcend the mode of goodness through the process of bhakti. Bhakti means to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And so the mode of goodness, the qualities of the mode of goodness are conducive to offering those to the Lord. Whereas the qualities of the mode of passion and ignorance are not offerable to the Lord in one's devotional life. So therefore, it says here, so uh, we find that everything in this material world can be understood by the movements of the mode of goodness, passion, and ignorance. One who sees can see, while well, this person's affected by the mode of passion, this person is affected by the mode of ignorance, this person is situated in the mode of goodness. So it's very indicative to those who are situated in Krishna consciousness, they can see the living entities and how they're acting, how they're thinking, simply by understanding how the modes work. Jai Sisi Gornitai Ki Jai. So, therefore, one has to practice the mode of goodness until one reaches that stage. And these are the good qualities that are mentioned in the Bhagavati Gita, which are qualities. And so, and towards the end of this chapter, it's mentioned the different qualities and the different modes, it says. So here it says that, though so Arjuna wants to know what is the symptoms of one who is beyond the mode of good, beyond the three modes. He speaks from verse number 21, Oh my dear Lord, by which symptom is one known who is in transcendence to these three modes? What is his behavior? How does he transcend the modes of nature? And Krishna answers that in the next four verses describing these qualities. He says, O son of Pandu, he who does not hate illumination, attachment or delusion when they are present, or long for them when they disappear. So, uh, why would anyone hate illumination? Because sometimes a person will receive a special mercy and become illuminated to the reality of Krishna consciousness, and one will be somewhat afraid of losing their material attachments. So they'll feel averse to the this illumination. He does not hate attachment or delusion. One who is unwavering and undisturbed through all these reactions of material qualities, remaining neutral and transcendental, knowing that the modes alone are active, who is situated in the self and regards all happiness and distress alike, who looks at a lump of earth, a stone and a piece of gold with an equal eye, who is equal towards the desirable and the undesirable, who is steady, situated equally well in praise and blame, honor and dishonor, who treats alike both friend and enemy, and who has renounced all material activities. Such a person is said to be situated in the mode 
the transcendental mode of nature. Okay. And then Krishna says, one who engages in full devotional service does not fall down in any circumstance. That person transcends the modes of material nature and comes to the spiritual platform. So these are some of the qualities of one who is transcendental to the mode of goodness. But one in our devoted day-to-day -day life, we must practice those qualities that are conducive to the mode of goodness. And they're mentioned throughout the Bhagavad Gita and, of course, in Srimad Bhagavatam. And then one, there's one verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam which describes devotional service in the mode of ignorance, devotional service in passion, and devotional service in the mode of goodness. So um, that seems to be a little bit hard to, what we say, uh, rationalize. How can devotional service be in ignorance, passion, or goodness? Devotional service is always transcendental, but the person who's performing devotional service can act in a certain way, and therefore their characteristics are similar to those modes. For instance, someone might worship the Lord in order to destroy their enemy. So they say that's devotional service in the mode of ignorance. <clears throat> One may worship the Lord in order to gain material things, devotional service in the mode of passion. One may worship devotional, perform devotional service in order to gain knowledge, devotional service in the mode of goodness. And devotional service actually is transcendental. Ayabilat Sita Sunya, Jnana Kamana Anukulena Krishna Silanam Bhakti Uttamam. Devotional service has to be free from personal gain and any kind of desire for philosophical gain through study of the scriptures. In other words, one should, oh, one should try to please the Lord by one's activities. That is devotional service. Okay, these are some characteristics. Uh, this chapter is very interesting. It requires much time and uh, study to uh, to get a grasp of these different modes and how the modes are acting. But you should know that everyone in the material world is affected by one or more of these modes. Sometimes there's a combination of modes acting all at once. Sometimes one mode is prominent, just like that. So, But a devotee, learns what are the qualities of the mode of goodness and practices these qualities. And then gradually, through pleasing the Lord, one becomes transcendental to all the three modes of material nature. Transcendental means one is not affected by happiness and distress, honor and dishonor. In other words, one is fixed above all the dualities that go about in this material world. So that doesn't mean one is oblivious. <laughs> Sometimes one who is oblivious to things looks like they're transcendental. <laughs> it's like if you, Prabhupada said, if you walk into a dirty place, and then you don't do anything to change it, doesn't mean you're transcendental. <laughs> it means you're in, the, you're in the same consciousness as the places. <laughs> like that, he says, yeah, he says, if you go into a dirty place, which is a mode of ignorance, and then you don't see anything wrong with that, that means you're in the mode of ignorance, or you're thinking in the mode of ignorance also. So yeah, so the modes have a different effect on us and they're always acting. One should be fixed in cultivating the qualities of the mode of goodness and offering those qualities in devotional service to the Lord according to the instructions of the spiritual master. Okay, these are some points that we can consider in regard to the mode of goodness.
Sometimes people say, well, happiness is in the mode of goodness. But Prabhupada said, yes, there is a little bit of happiness in the mode of goodness. But another quality of the mode of good is, is knowledge. And knowledge teaches us that there's no happiness in this material world. Even if people are experiencing a little material happiness, because of the modes are always in competition for supremacy, that happiness will disappear in due course of time. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes they feel happy, sometimes you don't. But transcendental consciousness means that one is feeling satisfied, happy and peaceful at all times in their execution of devotional service. What is transcendental anxiety? That's another thing. Transcendental anxiety means, I wish I could do more for Krishna. I'm not doing enough for Krishna. I wish I could do better for Krishna. That is not part of any of the three modes. That is actually what we say, a quality of one who is situated on the transcendental platform. It doesn't come so easily, transcendental anxiety. It's not material anxiety. A material anxiety is that if I get what I like, I'm happy. If I don't, then I'm in anxiety. Or if I lose what I have, I'm in anxiety. Transcendental anxiety means I'm not good enough in my devotional service. I want to try harder. I want to please Krishna more. I want to do, more. in other words, it inspires one to increase their devotional service. Material anxiety just causes one to become less and less active. Okay, these are some points we can think about. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> yes, Sarvana Bindu Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Uh, my question is, um, um, how can we be patient with others in developing when we notice that somebody is not developing a mode of goodness or advancing learning also? How, how can we uh, be patient. Well, if patient may not be the only thing that is the alternative in that situation. Being patient may be a certain initial feeling that allows one to think how to deal with the situation rather than becoming reactive and start to what we say become upset or angry or critical. So being patient means to think, well, okay, this is the situation with this individual and I have to work with that. So let me see what I can do to make a difference, to change, to give some instructions, to inspire that person to move forward. So initially, that mood, of, that mood of patience will cause one to reflect on how to act in the situation using one's intelligence. Whereas a mode of passion will, will cause one to immediately respond to the situation. Like there's a few things that I noticed since I've been here that I haven't said anything about because I've been patient. <laughs> that I think needs to be uh, what we say, what's the word, um, uh, seen as something that needs to be discussed and acted upon. So, but I haven't said anything, so I'm patient, <laughs> at least so far. <laughs> so, but I see there is so many other things going on at the same time. So before I can conclude, therefore, 
this is also a point we we may see the situation from our perspective and we only have a limited amount of knowledge of what's going on um, therefore sometimes when we react with that a limited amount of knowledge we commit offenses or make mistakes therefore it says uh, acti activity before understanding, action before understanding can lead to chaos, and understanding before activity can lead to success. Try to understand the situation before we uh, make our judgments or act in a certain way. especially when it comes to individuals. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Adata? Mm -hmm. uh, this is question by Goramitra Prabhu. Uh, what does it mean to not have material desires and how to ignore or transform our desires? To not have material desires means to act only for the pleasure of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Material desires means I'm acting for myself. <laughs> or I'm acting for my extended self in the form of society, country, friend, like that. So these are all material desires and anything rel related to the material world or to my own personal interests. When we act for Krishna's interest, that means no material desires. Or we act, we're acting without material desires. So material desires may not go away simply because we're engaged in devotional service. But gradually, as we continue in the process, through chanting the holy names, developing the qualities of goodness, and acting for the Supreme Lord, then we replace material desires with spiritual desires. So desire it has to be there, but it has to be purified, bringing it back to its natural state of acting for the pleasure of the Lord or acting in regards to religious principles. Like that. Any more questions? Because it's devotional service, there's some benefit, but generally if that activity doesn't change, then gradually they don't get any benefit after a while because then they're gradually pushing out devotional service in favor of these, what we say, these qualities of the mode of ignorance. If one s somehow or other falls into one of these bad qualities due to circumstance, then uh, that doesn't mean they disqualify themselves. They can just stop doing that and then do the right thing or think and act in the right way. But if one continues to act in the lower modes, then gradually one will fall away from devotional service. But there's always benefit. In fact, it mentions in the Shastras, in every activity there is some element of bhakti. Bhakti is there in every activity. It's like when people serve each other in the material world, there's an element of bhakti there. It's not transcendental, but it still shows the quality of bhakti because bhakti means to serve. Okay. Does that help? Okay. Anything else? Mm -hmm. 
Do we getting any response from cyberspace? Hmm? Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Mm-hmm. Sita Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay.